So it kind of feels like the Fantastic Four movie really isn't so much a superhero movie as it's almost like a supposed to be this sort of fairly serious sci-fi exploration of what it means to be superhuman. At least that's what the trailer is trying to say. Um, whether it actually turns out to be that way or not, it's hard to say. You, you can make a really good trailer that makes the movie seem like it's going to be a lot deeper and cerebral than most uh, su- superhero movies, but without being super dark. But then you get the actual movie, and it's just a stupid slo- schlock fest. So, you know, we, we still have a ways to go to see if this movie actually is living, going to live up to some of the promises this trailer's making. But it, it does seem like there's no mention of Doom. Absolutely no mention of Doom. You may see, like, bits of him, but you'd have to, like, look really hard to find him. Doom isn't in this trailer. You don't see the thing. You see only see him from the back. You only see Johnny use his powers momentarily. Um... You don't even you don't see Reed doing anything, you know, stretching at all. You see him doing science stuff. So you really it isn't, you know, they're they're really kind of saying they really are teasing you with this trailer of, you know, hey, you're gonna tune into this thing and and you're gonna see amazing things, but we're not gonna show. We're actually only gonna hint at them in the trailer because you kind of already know what you're gonna see. So they're actually kind of withholding the superhero action and giving us this sort of cerebral sci-fi film. It's almost as if they're trying to trick an audience that would never watch this movie otherwise into the theaters because, you know, hey, we, you know, it it really does. It does feel like they're almost tricking you uh, into giving you another movie. I think that, and this is something they do a lot with trailers. Um, you know, they, they, like Jarhead was a completely different movie than the trailer showed you it was. So that's what's happening here. I mean, this is I, th- I don't expect this movie to be half of what this trailer is saying it's going to. But if it does turn out that way, it's 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 uh, it's uh, actually kind of a bold move to take with the Fantastic Four. My concerns from here are. are um, you know, how are we going to address the uh, Susan Johnny issue? Are they brother and sister? Are they not? I mean, are are they, uh, you know, how how are we going to answer that? Because when you look at the casting, you look at the the actors that are playing it, and you know that Johnny and, and, and Sue are brother and sister, and you see the actors, you're kind of like, okay. It would be like if you cast uh, Carrie Washington as Cersei Lannister instead of Lena Headley, and you still have the rest of the Game of Thrones cast. You were like, okay, so how is Cersei related to the other uh, to the other Lannisters? I- is she blood related? Because she doesn't look it. You know, so and. and it really isn't. It shouldn't be that important, but it's it's one of those things. Was like if you are familiar with the Fantastic Four at all, and you you're walking into this movie, and you see this, it's going to raise those questions. Like, okay, wait a minute. So are they brother and sister in this version or not? And when you can't, it's hard. When you do that to an audience, when you put up that kind of a question, it's going to take them right out of your movie. It's going to be... It, it, it's it's that small detail that shouldn't matter. And it really doesn't, but it's enough to be like, okay, it takes your audience... It takes the, the audience that would know that they're brother and sister right out of this movie, and now you, you know, you're either forced to arbitrarily answer questions that you accidentally raised... By you know, hey, we want to we want to have a diverse cast. We want a progressive casting. We want you know, we, there's nothing wrong with having Johnny Storm being black. The problem isn't that Johnny Storm is black. The problem is that Johnny Storm is black and Susan is white, and we have no explanation of how they're brother and sister, or if they're brother and sister. 
I know that, and it, and I know somebody's gonna throw the race card. Like you're being racist about this. I'm not being. I, fine, you want to call me a racist? You know what? Fuck it. The idea is okay. You have the yeah. It, it's okay. Are they brother and sister or not? And it's that, it's that small detail that that has overwhelmed this conversation about the Fantastic Four movie in the first place. It isn't about whether or not they're going to get the dynamic right. It isn't about whether or not Susan Storm as a character is going to be respected and noticed instead of having her be basically a prize between Doom and and Reed like she was in the first two movies. You know, it it's not about whether or not uh, you know the thing is going to look good as a CGI character. It's not about whether the story is going to be any good. It's not even about whether you know the, whether or not it's a good idea to go with the Ultimate Universe origin story over the uh, the original origin story. And there, are, you know, none of those are the conversations that people are having over this movie. The conversations people are having over this movie is Johnny Storm's black, Susan Storm's white. What the fuck? And when you do this to an audience, you you put them in uncomfortable positions because they get mad when you mess with continuity. And then, like, social justice warriors get mad because, well, wait a minute, you don't want Johnny Storm to be black? And we didn't ever said we didn't want Johnny Storm to be black. We just don't understand why you're throwing this question to us. Like, okay, it, are they brother and sister? Are they not brother and sister? Are you going to explain this? And it almost feels like you had to add to a script in order to compensate for this. And that just seems so dumb. You know, it, it's like, for the same reasons people are wondering, okay, so why is there a female for and... Or now, why is you know why did we uh, change out Captain America again? You know, and it, it, and on one hand, yes, it's great that we want to have more diversity in superheroes. It'd also be nice if you know these were superheroes of their own autonomy. I mean, Cap the the current Captain America used to be the Falcon. Why? Couldn't we just have him be the Falcon and and have his own series and be awesome and written well and and be let more than just some token character who occasionally becomes Captain America? You know, why do we have to have a female Thor when we could easily have a Valkyrie series or a Lady Sif series? Um, why can't Lady Sif be a badass hero? <laughs> you know. Why does she always have to be kind of like, you know, Thor's girlfriend, or maybe not Thor's girlfriend, or, or, you know, or in the Ultimate Universe, why is that that way with Valkyrie? What, you know, why hasn't Black Widow gotten her own series? Is, we can give Spider-Woman her own series. We can, you know, we can, we can give Spider-Woman her own series, but we can't give it to Black Widow, and Black Widow's actually in the movies. And don't you think, you know, you know, Ro Romanoff would be an interesting character? I don't know. A and, you know, are we, you know, it, it's almost like... Why, you know, why are you going to replace an iconic superhero with somebody else when you could make another iconic superhero? You know... You know, all it really does is it it, it it almost feels like Black Barbie, in a sense. That, uh, you know, we, ha we have Barbie, and there's Black Barbie, and there's Latina Barbie, and they, they all have different names. But I never had Barbie dolls. I don't know them. So please forgive me. This is not Mike being a racist. This is Mike not having Barbie dolls. Okay, so I don't... I know that they have them. I could probably Google them, but I'm kind of busy right now vlogging. Okay? Okay, I just thought of this, and there's no script here. So, 
and, and it, it's almost like, okay, you know, we, well, we got to have a, a doll to represent every ethnicity. Okay, great. Why do they all look like Barbie? Why does it just look like a palette swap of Barbie? Shouldn't, you know, uh, shouldn't, uh, I, I don't know their names, but, you know, shouldn't, like, Charlotte and Monique and um, Desiree or wh whatever their names are, shouldn't they all look at least slightly different? I understand that some of the molding is going to stay the same because you want to save money, but, you know, you know, we used to, compl you know, old school video gamers will complain about villains that look like palette swaps of the hero. So why don't we... You know, and we don't, but we don't complain about palette swaps of dolls, or palette swaps of characters, and that's what it feels like with the the uh, the the, uh, the this casting that they'll do sometimes. Um, when they changed Nick Fury in the Ultimate Universe from a white guy to a black guy, <coughs> it wasn't just the race they changed. They changed Fury, and they actually made Fury interesting and more dynamic and it was a different person you know the the, the white Nick Fury of the mainstream Marvel Universe is sort of a rat, a, a, a rat packer if you will you know a Frank Sinatra James Bond type whereas the Nick Fury of the Ultimate Universe and ultimately the movies is Samuel Jackson come on let's not even mess around here <laughs> they knew exactly what they were doing and they got the perfect casting when they got him he's Sam Jackson you know he's Sam Jackson so you know that's they didn't so that like that's not a palette swap that's that's a character rehaul now if you're gonna rehaul Johnny Storm I don't, you know, what what are you really going to rehaul Johnny Storm into? You know, he's going to be a cocky young college kid. So now he's going to be a cocky young black college kid? And it just feels like now you're just going to throw in racial stereotypes in order to feel like you're reviving a character when you're just palette swapping him. And then I think that's the thing that bothers me about it. Is, is that it does feel like just like it's a palette swap. Why would you palette swap a character unnecessarily? Or if you're gonna do that, why wasn't Sue Black too? Why you Reed Reed can't be in an interracial relationship? You know, it raises one less question. It really does. It you know it's like well Reed marrying a black woman as a white guy who makes a hell of a lot more sense than a black guy and a white girl being brother and sister. I mean, it, it's a simple thing called genetics. <laughs> you know? But, mm, I'm going on about this. And that that's what, that's the infuriating part is, this is the dominating conversation. It's not about the plot of the movie. It's not about the, the tone of the movie. I honestly think this trailer is some BS posturing and we're just going to end up with like a normal superhero movie. Um, but it at least it's willing to lie to us, to try to trick us into theaters. It's like, yeah, we know that you have a bad history with the Fantastic Four mainstream, uh, mainstream America. And we know some of the hardcore comic book fans aren't exactly happy with us throwing arbitrary questions about who's related to who now because of casting, which we, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think that this movie's going to be okay. I don't know if it's going to be great, but they're willing to try, which you have to admit is a little bit more effort than the first two movies got. Now, the first two movies, they, they, it kind of felt like we're going to take these kind of low-level stars that people know and we're going to put them in these roles and kind of just expect the Spider-Man thing to happen with them. Because, you, know, you know, superheroes, they're trendy and popular right now and, they, and then they churned out a movie that wasn't very well written and the characters weren't really fleshed out and... You know, the Fantastic Four play into their stereotypical tropes 
more, you know, with Reed being the neglect neglectful boyfriend and and Sue being kind of just, you know, the put upon wife and whatnot. Ugh. So I don't know. I think that uh, I think this movie is going to be fine, but this trailer is complete bullshit. There's no way. I, I, I they, they want, they want us to think this movie is going to be a lot smarter than it'll end up being. But no, yeah. no doom, no mention of doom at all. That's that's different. You don't see that in superhero movie trailers. Usually you have a pretty good idea who the bad guy is going to be. So that 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 in itself is a big deal. I mean, fanboys know Doom's going to be in this movie. You know Doom's going to be in this movie. I know Doom's going to be in this movie. But the trailer does not show you Doom. Might be for the best. <laughs> so...